In today's broadcast, I have with me Scott Tay and Kavita Kaur, founders of Beyond Expeditions. So, Scott and Kavita, tell me more about Beyond Expeditions. How did you come about setting up the business and then um, and share your journey? You know, what led you to become an adventure entrepreneur? And then how did the idea of Beyond Expeditions come about? So, my name is Scott and this is Kavita. Um, we started Beyond Expeditions, an adventure travel company since 2017. And it has been a fabulous journey so far. We are an adventure travel company specializing in curating and organizing experiential trips for city folks um, like Singaporeans to places that are uncharted, such as Mongolia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, just to name a few. So yeah, the whole idea of Beyond Expeditions, why it was started is because we have this love of adventure travel and we see the opportunity of being the channel where we bring city folks to places that are uncharted and gives them this opportunity to get out of their comfort zone and to go beyond their limits. Because from what we believe, when people are being pushed to their limits or to their age, this is when there's opportunity for growth. Yep. You're talking about personal growth here? Yes, exactly. Personal growth. And it's when people are being pushed to the limits, they have to then meet this, we call it the inner demons in them. And when they face them uh, in the most uh, rawest state, then either they can figure out how do they conquer these inner demons or do they just get um, do they raise their white flag and then let, let these inner demons take control over them? Did it happen for you? Is that the reason why you started this, this adventure? <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course, during the journey um, of being on different adventure travel before we started Beyond Expeditions, uh, there were many moments where I have to face my own uh, challenges on these adventure travels, but also facing these inner demons. Yeah. yeah, so to further mm. add on to that, um, with your question by asking whether we mm. have gone through it ourselves, mm. I mean, being city people ourselves, when we, and being in Singapore, we are very used to things being very in order. If I do A, for B will follow, C will follow, D will follow, you know, it's, it's, that's the way we've been very conditioned. Um, but when you're pushed to a, uh, um, a third world country or a country that's very rugged, the first thing you're going to learn is patience, for sure. A doesn't, B doesn't follow A, C, you know. You're going to learn patience. You're going to learn how to stop thinking about yourself always. Even as simple as appreciating water, hot shower, it doesn't mean you, you pay for a hostel or a lodge. You're going to be guaranteed hot shower. You know, that's our mindset as a city person. I pay for something, I'm going to get something out of it. But no, they, are going to, they go by a different water source, water supply. You are going to maybe have a cold shower at the end of the day because the rest of your roommates used it all up. So are you going to get upset or are you going to understand that, you know, things work differently in different places. So you learn patience, you learn how to be resilient, you learn how to be understanding because you're no longer in your First world country. Yeah. Not in your comfort zone. You're not Basically, in your comfort zone. you're changing zone. your mindset yeah. to yeah. see and also to appreciate what, how other people or other cultures live. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. Because mm. uh, to, just to add on to, to the point that Kavita has made, um, which is uh, having hot water when, when showering. We mm. were literally just experienced that uh, two weeks ago in Kyrgyzstan. We were in mm. a town and we were very excited that, hey, you know, finally... After eight days of uh, <laughs> camping out in the wilderness, we're very excited that, oh, tonight's accommodation is in a guest house and there's hot shower. And then when we enter into our room, um, Kavita showered first. Yeah. And then <laughs> she, she didn't shower for that long. It was like four or five minutes. And after her turn, I went in and I turned on the shower. And then uh, there was literally no hot water at all. So I was like, oh no, like what am I going to do? So, but, but of course, we have been sort of like, condition we know this kind of things yeah. happens because in in places as rural rural as kyrgyzstan or in mm. india for example they they boil their water in a tank and then once it's finished you have to wait for another 30 minutes or one hour for the, the cold water to be heated up again so i mean you started the company in 2017 i yeah. mean you both of you look very young how old were you then <laughs> so 
you were 24, I was 26. Yeah, yeah. I believe so, yeah. <laughs> she looks younger than you. Yes. But so, what kind of people or, you know, uh, should go for adventure experiences? I know you mentioned, you know, people who are burned out, you know, or who want to take life to a the next level, they want to experience something which is different from the normal day-to-day -day routine that they have or the kind of travels that everybody goes to, the commercial travels. In what ways do adventure experiences contribute to their personal growth? Mm. You've seen many, I mean, you, you have like, how many trips a year? Oh, well, quite a number actually, yeah. like 40 or 50. And each trip, how many people actually join you on this adventure? Well, on average, we have like three to four each group expeditions. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we do have just two packs, sometimes one packs, but maximum, we, we like to keep it small and intimate, so it's about six to eight, depending on the destination. Right, yeah. so quite a number of people have already gone for all these adventure travels. So what kind of people do you see go on such adventures with you? Yeah, so um, firstly, it's people who want to do a dig digital detox, you know, where these countries will force you to put your phone aside because you have no network in certain areas. That's one. And um, there's a difference with being a tourist and being a traveller. So our itinerary is very designed in a way to allow you to learn to be a traveller. And being a traveller, it starts with the mindset, basically. Like the water situation that we are sharing, it's basically your mindset towards um, challenges that you're going to face. And, and in, in these countries, you have certain challenges that we are not used to facing in where we are. So basically... Um, Participants who once, yes, they can see all our itineraries and everything very fixed on the website. But at the end of the day, we're going to help you to be a traveller because things can change along the way. You know, you're not going to reach your destination in six hours. Your car may break down. You're going to have to push your car in, in the cold or you have to go and maybe entertain yourself for two hours while the driver fix your car. And that helps you to change your mindset towards being a traveller rather than a tourist because a tourist is, oh, day 1, 2 p.m., I need to reach here. 5 p.m., I need to be here. 8 p.m. is my dinner. Where's my dinner? I'm still in the a car. A set itinerary yeah. that they need to follow, right? Correct, yeah. correct. But, but have you, okay, all these travellers who have been with you, they, they, they have set the expectations from the start, right? What they what they expect. Well, we tell, them, we tell them not to have any expectations, actually. <laughs> but did they fail? I mean, did they, did, 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 do you see people who actually failed as in they couldn't carry on with the trip anymore? I, they, I, they do their best. <laughs> I, I would say it's a personal journey because, yeah. like, your very first question to us was, uh, uh, like, what kind of people should come on our trips, right? Mm. Of course, we encourage everyone because... I mean, there are different ways for, for a person to grow and we, we feel that adventure travel is just one of the many ways where people can, can grow as an individual because going on the adventure travel, it, like, like, like what Kavita has touched on, the itinerary is not fixed. And this is the beauty of going on an adventure travel because there are so many things that are unpredictable. And from the traveler's point of view, how we adapt, to the situation at that point of time, it it shows uh, what kind of person you are. Of course, it takes. It's not like after you come on our trip, you go back home. Mm -hmm. Means that's transformation. Yeah. Yeah. Transformation takes sometimes weeks, it's, months, or years. Yeah. It may be after after going on one of our trips. Uh, your next trip be two years after, three years after, and then somehow when you are in Japan, for example, on a family holiday trip, and then you start to think of, hey, you know, um, this, if I, when I was, I remember when I was in Mongolia with Beyond Expeditions, this same issue happened, and how I managed to handle the situation so calmly, you know? Yeah. So basically, it's really not that the person will change after going on a trip. The person got to know him, himself or herself better yeah. than he or she was able to do certain things that they didn't know, they didn't realise that they could yeah. from the trip. And not only you change, it. it's appreciating the small little things when you come back. We've had participants who actually also say that they just appreciate their toilet bowl and their hot showers when they come back. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so just appreciating very little things. That's what the, the whole 
point of adventure travel is that we, we come back and we don't take things for granted. Yeah, True. it's a good reminder. So how do you design and create such unique and memorable adventure experiences for, mm -hmm. your, for, mm -hmm. for people? Yeah, so I think before we even go down uh, on the ground to, to work out the itinerary with our local partners, it often hits us in terms of what we want our participants who sign with us to experience, what are some uh, value added, what are some things that would be beneficial from being on the trip with us. Maybe it can be just having a little bit more patience or a little appreciation for, for simple things or learning how to um, be comfortable with other travelers who are strangers because we do have a lot of solo female travelers on our on our expeditions mm -hmm. and these these travelers some of them are introverts but they just have this desire to want to explore the world and even though they are quiet even though they they look a certain way but this peop, these participants they 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 are really brave and they they do want to um uh, uh, push push their limits and, and explore Actually, more. Actually, I do know quite a number of introverts who go on solo trips on their own. Yeah, that and to add on the point about how we also come up with the itineraries that we go on the ground and we try, um, we put ourselves through all the experience, the local experiences, and as raw as it gets, such as living with the nomads or cooking cooking with the shepherds, um, milking the goats, the cows, all this we'll experience and we want to give um, our city friends that experience as well. So we curate the itinerary in a way and it's not so commercial. So we don't go to some uh, restaurant to learn how to cook or a place. We try and get it as raw as possible to support the local community there as well. And even riding horses with the shepherds to go from one destination to another and yak riding, camel riding. Yeah, we do it the least commercial way, but more in a way where that's how the shepherds and the nomads live their day-to-day -day life. So you get to experience it as well. How do you decide, you know, which are the countries, which are the places that, you know, you oh. want to create memorable experiences? How, how do you pin down, you know, like Mongolia, for example? Yeah, yeah, great. So, um, yeah, back to that question. Of, of course, um, apart from running trips to Mongolia, we, we, we have now um, a numerous destinations as well. We want to make sure that the country which we are offering to our participants are so inaccessible that you highly possibly can't do it yourself unless you're just someone who is self-sufficient. For example, I mean, of course, if I, I can go to Tajikistan myself if I were to just rent a car, but it's not just that, because what if uh, somehow out there in the wilderness, your car breaks down and there's no one else around you because you're in uh, the wilderness, right? I, do you know how to fix your tire? Do you know how to fix your axle of the car? Things like that. I think it boils down to that. So choosing a country that's uncharted, it, it, it makes it difficult for anyone to to just book a ticket and fly over there and do it themselves. So, of course, we don't touch Europe because anyone can do it. Because you don't need to drive, but you can take a train to go around places, right? But for places like Madagascar, for example, uh, it is, we hardly know anyone who has been to Madagascar. I think yeah. zero people I know yeah. have been to Madagascar. And that's something that makes us wonder, hey, you know, uh, what's actually there? But of course, not every country that we do a recce trip means we we'll open it up. We have to go down there to see, hey, you know, what's so special about yeah. this place, how unique it is, and whether is it, um, is it worth sending people there to, to experience um, things that we want them to experience. Yeah. So to add on from a female's perspective is the countries that we pick is also considering that I think 90% of our participants are female, solo mm. female travellers. Mm. Yeah, so the countries that we pick is going to be these um, uncharted places, 
tough to go to and females there are a lot of them who wants to explore yep. somehow we have noticed but they all they have is an idea of this country based on media and sometimes the media portrays a very negative part of the this these countries you know so what we want to do is when we go down when we pick the countries we want to see that hey this is a country that's got a lot to offer but we want to also give females the security that we have wrecked this place um the itinerary has been built with safety in mind and yep. you should explore these places as well so mm. this is one one area that we also look at for yeah. the females so, perspective which i actually wanted to ask as well so how do you prioritize safety while still delivering the experience because mm -hmm. you mentioned that there are a lot of uh, solo female travelers mm -hmm. with you right so how do you actually you know ensure that first of all they are prepared for the trip for, mm -hmm. for whatever hardship mm -hmm. or what to expect you know and also their safety mm -hmm. uh, well i mean uh, first of all it boils down to um the country we are we are we are operating in and secondly it comes down to who we are partnering with so of course the recce trips uh comes down into play to make sure that the people we are collaborating with they are they know their stuff and they've been doing this craft for a long time to yeah and point from the guides to the drivers to the shepherds yeah, yeah all the screening yeah so so it's, it's it's very easy to just find like a local partner and uh, hey you know um talk about the price and then blah, blah, blah. okay let's do this but it's more than that because the the moment you chose a a wrong partner mm. when 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 something bad happens nobody is going to take responsibility and it can be very serious and when 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 that happens it's it's going to be tough so we like from Madagascar for example even before we decide to launch this destination to our offerings we spoke to more than 15 partners more than 15 partners and we finally decided to 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 go with one of the 15 people we 15 or more people we we, we spoke to because um yeah we did a lot of um yes. questioning and see how they handle safety as well and also to add on is safety um for example we want to get participants to experience horse riding we ensure that they have their helmets like for horse riding we'll get them to wear helmets in certain countries um as mentioned before getting to know the drivers the shepherds the guides all that has already been um screened by us as well yeah so so on top of safety as well like um I'm not too sure whether you're familiar with our charity expeditions mm. where we have run uh seven times already. So apart from the commercial trips which we we run all year round, uh we also have this sort of campaign or project called Beyond Limits. It's basically using the element of adventure uh for for a charitable cause. So so far we have done seven Beyond Limits. The reason one which happened just 2 weeks ago was in Kyrgyzstan that was a fundraising expedition trek for Breast Cancer Foundation so when we do this how the beyond limits expedition trek is different from the commercial trips is it's really going beyond limits and with the track record of running charity treks in these countries we are operating in it gives uh participants who are going on our commercial trips more assurance that you know these guys knows their stuff they actually are on the ground doing the expedition rather than just you know doing advertising you know sitting behind a computer and doing advertising they are on the ground and they are from the team itself the core team itself yeah and and uh on our charity tracks we do like a full blown like a pre during and post uh uh, uh experience journey for our participants so we got the group trainings in singapore four times where we prepare them for the trek we also have like an official briefing where we go down to the nitty gritty stuff on what to expect what to pack and and also all of the questions that they have they can they can just ask and then we will answer them from our level of experience yeah how long does it take to prepare for such a charity event Well, it usually takes about three to four months mm. before the expedition. Yeah, so and of we also it's encourage. Once a year, is it? Once no, no. A year, then. Now we have scale up ready. Yeah. So n next year is going to be a very exciting. Um, you've never done this before, but we're going to 
push forward with it. So it's going to be six or seven charity tracks just in 2025. So anybody can sign up for this event? Mm. Well, <laughs> I, I would love to say anybody can, can sign up for this, this charity track. But to be realistic, um, it, you, you need someone who... With their purpose. Yeah, yeah. you need to have that be why. So to to the purpose is because the Beyond Limits charity tracks are in locations and in elements that really pushes people out of their comfort zone. Either it's extreme cold, extreme hot, or high elements, or you know whatever like adventure style. But um, the purpose must be so strong that the participants who sign up with us are willing to go out, ask their friends and families to support the cause they are going on and also put themselves on this very challenging trip. And whatever this trip throws, uh, this expedition, whatever this expedition throws you, at the end of the day, you have your end goal. Yeah, like our recent uh, Kyrgyzstan expedition, very strong cancer warriors there. Their purpose was so strong. The altitude was hitting them. We can see it in their faces. They are pale, but their purpose was so strong. They didn't want to take the support crew. They want to keep pushing on. The support horses. Wow. The support horses, yeah. sorry. Wow. You know, yeah. they, so these are the participants, I would say, will strive better in such expeditions. So it's not, it's not like you cast a net and it's for everyone. Because different expeditions, we have seen different kinds of personalities and we realised that we actually do screening. We, yeah, ent we interview them. I was them. about to ask. So you screen and select the participants. Yes, yeah. we do. We do meet them face to face after okay. they sign up a few questions with us online. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about how you actually use you know, or enhance sustainability and you, in responsible tourism in those countries. Okay, both Kavita and myself, we are vegetarians. There's a very strong factor on why we, we are promoting sustainability because uh, by being vegetarian, it's, it's, it's already not supporting commercial farming. Yeah, And on our expeditions, not all partners in our operating countries will, will understand and see the importance in sustainability. It can be as simple as you sure. know, an experience I've had personally when I was in Mongolia. Um, we collected all of the trash in the wilderness, in the countryside. And then uh, we asked like, our Mongolian guides, hey, you know, where do we throw this? Because it's all plastic bottles and, and beer cans. And they say, oh, you just throw it into the stove and we just burn it. That's what the, the nomad, nomads do, you know? So everything that we have collected, like from, from tissues, wet wipes to, to uh, like chocolate wrappers, you know, it's all burnt and then just disintegrate into, into fumes. Yeah. So, yeah, but anyways, what we have been doing, uh, at least for the very start, uh, was to introduce a recyclable and reusable trash bag for all of our Beyond Limits participants. So during the track, each of them will have a trash bag hung outside their backpack. So at any point of time, uh, they need to throw anything, can be tissues, can be like energy bar wrappers, they can just throw it inside. And then when we're done with the track, we go back to town, we, we empty out the trash bag. So by implementing this, no one will be throwing their waste into nature, which is great for the environment. So pretty much leave no trace. And also to go beyond that, um, this is something we just learned not too long ago uh, from a recent uh, track we, we embarked in Sweden. It's a Fjallraven uh, 130 kilometers track, sorry, 110 kilometers, yeah, or 130 kilometers um, in, in Sweden. We, we, went, we went to Sweden last year, August, and we, we learned from the locals that by leaving no trace, it means even uh, our poop, you know, should be, we should dig a hole and, 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 and put it under the soil so that it's not, uh, uh, because once it's being exposed, any animals who are part of the ecosystem in the national park um, consumes it, it will change the ecosystem. So we didn't know about that. We were, 
we were very fascinated by the whole science behind it and that's why we, we took what we learned and we shared it with uh, our participants. What do you see in your, your company in five years' time? I mean, you're, you're almost approaching 10 years, right? Your, mm. Yeah. I think, yeah. I, I think what, what, what's, what's really satisfying for both of us um, as, as the founders of Beyond Expeditions is when we get um, messages, messages from clients after they come back home from, their, from, from, from our trips and thanking us uh, th and letting us know that it was a life-changing experience. They, they really appreciate what we do and have crafted out um, the experience for them. And it's, it's really satisfying and it makes us want to find more creative ways mm. to, to bring more value to, to our participants, you know. But what really gets us pumped is being, having, being the catalyst for our participants to go on a, a transformative experience journey. So by crafting out intentional uh, experiences that, that ask them really tough questions in their face on why do they want to do this, or how do they feel when they maybe surmount this particular high passes in the mountains, and what was one strength or weakness that you discovered uh, from today's trek, for example. So it's mm -hmm. this kind of things that, that really digs deeper than scratching the surface that, that gives us the hope and the fuel to continue doing what we're doing. Okay, Kavita, anything else to wrap up this <laughs> session? <laughs> um, back to... At, at the moment, for now, I mean, not 30 years later... <laughs> But I think we still want to cater to more introspective participants for sure. I mean, if they are facing a burnout in their jobs or they want a digital detox and, and they want something more introspective, then definitely adventure travel is the way to go. And if you really want to, you feel too caught up in this red race being here, then I think yeah, our fellow Singaporeans should just head out and see what's out there to appreciate every little thing. Well, thank you so much, Scott and Kavita, for joining us for on this session of CA Listen, Sparkling Conversations. 